Howdy, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today we're gonna to do part four of my beginner hunting video series. So if you haven't already taken a look at the first three parts, I recommend going back and looking at those. It's very important to follow the whole process up to the hunt and the preparation and practice that it takes to be able to get to this point. So the first thing I wanna mention is just go hunt. You know, the, there's only one way you're gonna be able to harvest an animal and that's by getting out in the woods. You're never gonna harvest what you want by sitting on your couch watching videos of me all day. So get out in the woods and hunt, you know, sit there for hours. You may not see anything, you may see a lot, but you're not gonna learn and you're not gonna get better and be more successful unless you get out in the woods. One of the things that I like to do before I go out and hunt, especially public land, is I create a plan. I have a game plan set up, I know you know, where I plan on hunting. I have a plan A, B, and C. So if I go to the first spot and there's somebody there or somebody in the area, I go to the next one and so on and so forth. And so make sure you have a good plan set up. You know, check the weather. You know, if it's gonna rain, maybe push it back a day. I would create, you know, your checklist as I mentioned in the preparation video. You know, get your backpack together, go through your checklist, make sure you have everything you need in it. Another reason of having multiple locations is your wind may change. You know, you may look the night before and it says it's gonna be a north wind and it ends up being a west wind or something like that. So make sure you have some options in the area you plan on hunting so that if, if there are changes in the middle of the day or something comes up, you know, you can move locations and it's, it's not like your hunt is over because of it. If you plan on hunting alone, I think you need to let your spouse or a family member or a friend know where you plan on hunting. Tell them your A, B, C locations. If you get out there and you end up changing something from your plan, I would let them know. If something happens to you, they don't hear from you. You know, you want them to be able to tell the game warden or cop where you should be or where you said you were going to be, and they, they can try and go out there and help find you in case something happened. Make sure you tell them your plan on timing when you plan on getting out there, when you plan on being home. Uh, if anything changes from that, I would make sure you let them know. The last thing you wanna do is get stuck in the woods and nobody have any idea where you're at. If you are hunting with somebody, make sure they are aware of where you plan on sitting and where you're gonna be shooting. Make sure you're not shooting towards each other, that you're pointing in different paths. And again, that way, if they know where you're gonna be at, if something happens, they know where you are and can go find you quicker. So if you are hunting public property, I recommend getting out there pretty early, especially if you have a spot that you really like and you wanna make sure you're the first one there. I'd make sure you get out there before daybreak. Be safe going up in your stand. Make sure you bring a flashlight. I like to use the little headlamps and I'll put, you know, I'll do a red or green light instead of a, a white light. It tends to spook animals less. And again, give yourself some extra time. I know if you went through my part two, I talked about practicing getting into your stand or you're blind and you practice, but you probably did it during the day all the time. And now it's night and you know, you have to find that location. Say you're walking in a mile, you know, you have to find it, you have to set up and, and get up a tree or get in your blind. It's going to take longer than you anticipate. So prepare for that maybe give yourself an extra 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get out there before legal shooting light. And make sure you're as quiet as possible. The last thing you wanna do is spook an animal off their bed or spook them away from where you plan on hunting. Because a lot of times they won't come back. So I would make sure you get out there early enough, you get out there quietly and safely and you get in your stand before daybreak. One thing that I think a lot of people don't understand or they don't want to do is move spots. A lot of times you may get out there and you just have this feeling that it's not going to be a good spot or you're seeing, you know, an animal or deer walk off in the distance and it's just not on the trail you're on and you've seen three or four go by and you're just not in a good spot. Don't be afraid to quietly get down and move spots. If you've practiced getting up and down a tree or getting in and out of your blinds, it shouldn't be that difficult to move around and do it quietly. You know, I, I think your instincts are your number one thing when you're in the woods. So if you don't feel like it's a good spot, it, it probably isn't a good spot. And don't be afraid to move. You know, it's 
it may be 30 minutes to get down and get back up a tree, but that would be worth it if it makes it a successful hunt. One of the biggest things I can't urge enough is patience. You know, I, I think a lot of people hope to get out in the woods and see a deer or a hog or, you know, whatever they're hunting every single time and be able to harvest an animal whenever they go out. And that isn't really how it works, especially on public property. You know, so you just have to be patient, especially as a beginner, you're still learning you know, you need to figure out how the animal reacts to your smell, how they react to sound. And a lot of what you do when you public hunt or, or you're a beginner in general is you, you learn on the fly. You start to see where these animals like to bed, where they're going to eat. You start to learn their routines, especially if you have trail cameras. I would just be patient and, and make sure, you know, you don't get too frustrated with not seeing something. I mean, obviously, if you're not seeing anything, you're doing something wrong. You should probably find a new spot or location or go back to the drawing board and, and see, try and understand why you're not seeing anything. You can't just keep doing the same thing and expect different results. All right, so the time's come and you're up in your stand or you're in your blind and what well, you're hunting walks out in front of you. So all I can say is make sure you take an ethical shot. Don't just shoot because it's the first thing you've seen and you're legally able to shoot it and you just want to take a shot. Make sure you know your backdrop and you can take a safe shot. And make sure you take an ethical shot. Aim for the vitals and take a good clean shot. It's going to be nerve wracking. I mean the first, first deer I shot was probably the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done. It's, it's excitement, it's adrenaline, you know, there's a lot going on, take some deep breaths. Take your time, make sure you get off a good ethical shot. Also, don't force shots. I can't say this enough. Sometimes the best shot is not taking one at all. If you don't take an ethical shot, you may never find that deer anyways. So take the time, wait till it gets broadside, wait till it's within your range, and take a good ethical shot. So part of the reason we practice so much is for this situation. You wanna make sure you're comfortable taking these shots in practice so that when you get into a hunting situation and say it's coming from a different side or it's coming on your weak hand or off hand, you're comfortable taking that shot. So now you've taken your shot, you are pretty sure you hit it. Sometimes you have no idea because your adrenaline's rushing and you just pulled the trigger. I get it, that's how my first shot was. I thought I saw the deer jump, I don't know. Uh, so don't, don't be alarmed if you're afraid you didn't hit it or missed or whatever. Just sit there and wait. Most likely, if you've been practicing and you practiced a lot, you probably made a good shot and you just need to sit there and wait and let the deer or the animal expire. And that was one thing that I was never told until I went on my first hunt and I was wondering why we didn't get out and go start tracking it. And my uncle was like, no, you've got to wait 20 to 30 minutes. You want to let the, let the deer expire because if you get out and start trying to track it and it hasn't died yet, you're just gonna keep pushing it and pushing it and that thing can go miles and you'll never find that deer. So if you know you made a good shot, you saw it fall, I would still wait 15, 20 minutes. If you're bow hunting, I recommend waiting even longer, 30 minutes to an hour. If you know you made a gut shot or not the greatest shot, you know, maybe even come back overnight the next morning, I would just make sure that you give it enough time to expire and don't push it, otherwise you'll never find your animal you've waited enough time get down from your blind and go find where the animal was when you took the shot you're going to be looking for some blood or guts or fur or anything that shows that you actually did indeed hit the animal from there you're going to want to start tracking you know the deer you're going to look for blood droplets broken twigs and use your brain on this because you know you may see you may lose the blood trail and there's a a spot where it's pretty brushy and something probably is not getting through there and then there's a spot that looks kind of a little bit more like a trail you know obviously they're going to go towards the trail i guess depending your game you know hog may go into the brushy spot but that's part of knowing your game is knowing how they're going to react after you shoot them as well a lot of times if you hit them and they're running it's going to splatter on some trees near them or some uh, tall grass to so just Keep your eyes peeled and look for uh, look for blood and fur, and you can go online and look up what the different colors or bubbles or what everything means when you see blood. Uh, I highly recommend doing that. 
in part one when you're doing your research on your animal. And what I also recommend is, you know, I've used Onyx for this. You can use tape or toilet paper or something and uh, just mark where the last blood sign was because you may mark it and you go to find the next one and you're looking all around and all of a sudden you turn around and you have no idea where the last blood sign was and you've got to start over. So you want to mark the last one and each time you find a new sign you can keep marking. Another thing you can do is if you're struggling finding it yourself, get some friends or a couple friends and do a grid search. You need to do everything you can do to recover the deer or the animal that you shot. So once you follow the blood trail and you found your down animal, be careful approaching it. They may not have fully expired. Make sure you verify the animal is expired before you get too close. As I mentioned in the preparation video, retrieving the animal is sometimes the hardest part and something that you need to make sure you're prepared for. Because if you're in two miles, you've got to drag that animal out two miles or get a cart and bring him out. Or you may you know, decide you're going to gut it and field dress it there and, and quarter it even. So you may still be in the woods for another hour just you know, getting the meat off the deer. Make sure you know the rules and regulations of where you're hunting because they typically have requirements on what you're required to take from the animal you shoot. Sometimes you need the proof of sex, so you need to be able to take the head or the sexual organs as well. So make sure you also know the tagging requirements if you need to tag your animal. Because the last thing you want to do after all this excitement is get a fine for not properly tagging or quartering or taking your deer out of the woods. So hopefully if you've already watched my part three video, you already have a taxidermist and a butcher, somebody to process all the meat for you ready. I would go ahead and bring the meat over to the processor. If you plan on getting the taxidermist to do a mount or something like that, I would go ahead and do that right away as well. So I appreciate y'all watching this series. There's a lot of people like me out there that, that need some help or a mentor or somebody to kind of walk them through this process sometimes. So hopefully this was helpful. And again, you know, I think the number one thing is just being safe and enjoying yourself out in the woods. Don't take shortcuts. The last thing you want to do is, is get hurt or get somebody else hurt. Make sure you take smart, safe, ethical shots. If you come across other hunters in public lands, be courteous. Don't be afraid to stop and, and chat a little bit. They're out there for the same reason you are. They want to enjoy it and hunt and have a good time. If somebody's already out there and they're at a spot, you know, walk to a different one, be nice, tell them, you know, hey, I'm going to be over in this area just so that they know where you're at and don't take shots in that direction. Don't forget to have fun. I mean, you're outdoors. If you don't see anything, you know, just enjoy it. Enjoy being outside. Enjoy the sounds, the smells. You know, it, it, there's nothing better sometimes than just being in the woods and getting away from your normal everyday life. So again, I appreciate you all joining along in this video series. If there's any of these topics or videos that you'd like me to discuss in more detail, please leave a comment or send me an email. I appreciate you all tuning in and I'll have more videos similar to this coming. Thanks.